He has 14 unlimited hydroplane victories. He's a five-time driving champion, and three times he has taken his crew to the national team title. His career trademark is speed with style. His popularity unmatched. But there's a gap in Steve David's racing resume that he hopes will be filled today here in Detroit. Sportsnet presents the Air National Guard Series. Today, it's the 103rd running of the APBA Gold Cup for the H1 Unlimited Hydroplanes on the Detroit River in Detroit, Michigan. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Weber. Thanks for having us in for the race. The Gold Cup is the oldest trophy in motorsports, so for these teams and these fans, this is the Indianapolis 500. Some stars have been able to win it multiple times. Hanauer, Watt. Muncie, Chenoweth, and more. In other years, it's been an underdog like Jim McCormick, Mitch Evans, or Mike Hansen. Still, some have never been able to grab the gold. Miss Budweiser driver Jim Cropfeld won 22 times, but he never won the Gold Cup. And another prestigious name missing from that trophy, five-time national driving champion Steve David. Three times in a row, he took the Alberto Bunch to the national team championship. He has 14 career wins. That's tied for 10th on the all-time list. But he's never won the Gold Cup. It is the one win missing from a Hall of Champions resume. Won all of them but this one. So it's that one elusive one. And uh, obviously win it would be huge. It'd be a, a, a signature event uh, in the career. If I don't win it, it just proves that it uh, is definitely elusive. And whoever uh, does uh, uh, win this thing earned it. Even the best know winning the big one can be elusive. Dale Earnhardt Sr. tried 19 times to win the Daytona 500 before he finally won this first one in his 20th start. Today, Steve David tried to win his first APBA Gold Cup in his 20th start. For more on today's racers, my colleague Mike Allen. Thank you, Bill. For any driver to win the Gold Cup, you not only have to beat your competitors, but you've got to tame this Detroit Tiger right here, the river. This is the toughest race course we run on all year long, and it's meant to be. It's got the smallest turn on one end, the largest turn on the other. And in between, we're going to throw you a seawall out of turn two. And we're going to give you a back straightaway that's not really straight. And these drivers will be approaching 200 miles per hour at the end of that straightaway. So if your boat is fast, doesn't mean anything unless you can turn. Okay, Mike, thanks a lot. 12 boats in the pits, 10 made a qualifying attempt. Let's give you the racing rundown to this point. Beginning with the fastest qualifier, Dave Bilwak in the spirit of Qatar, qualified at 162.9 miles an hour in his first two heats, two wins, but the work is just beginning. Stayed late last night, made some adjustments to the hull, so I think we should be good. Jimmy Shane in the Graham trucking, a big win in 1B after a terrific battle with J. Michael Kelly. And despite a nasty encounter in the rooster tail turn, he was the winner of 2A after Scott Lydico was penalized for a lane violation. Everybody on the team is fired up. We're all excited. Uh, we know we need to stay clean today. Um, so that's going to be our main goal is just staying clean. Steve David in the Oboy Alberto Miss Madison, the second fastest qualifier at 161.7, finished second to Bill Walk in the 1A, but was penalized in 2A for being too early at the score up buoy and placed third. The number nine, Al D.B. Dodge, driven by John Zimmerman. They qualified in a strong fifth position. They also picked up a third and a second in their heats. Pretty good performance by a steadily improving team. The number 11, Peters and May, driven by J.W. Myers, qualified fourth with a strong fourth and a second place finish in their respective heats. Okay, how about the lucky number 13, the Detroit Yacht Club boat, sponsored by Tubby's Grilled Subs, driven by Cal Phipps. Not a good weekend. It did not start, it did not finish, and that boat has been withdrawn from the competition here in Detroit. As for the number 17, the Miss Red Dot and driver Kip Brown, a fourth place finish and a disqualification for an N2 fuel violation. So a tough weekend already for the Miss Red Dot bunch. Now in Heat 1C, watch the boat in the middle, Mike Webster. Yeah, watch this, Bill. Unfortunately, Mike hits a roller. There's nothing you can do to recover from this. And unfortunately, again, they had to test out a brand new capsule that just installed earlier this year. We were running real hard, and you know the other two boats were running real hard as well, going down the back stretch into the rooster tail turn. Unfortunately, just caught a gust, hit a roller with that right sponsor, and it lifted. And uh, you know it's just along for the ride after that point. So you know 
know, just real disappointing for our team. That was uh, really showing some good improvements uh, over last year in Madison and then coming to Detroit and breaking the 150s for qualifiers. So, you know, it's unfortunate, but, uh, you know, it's racing. J. Michael Kelly is in the number 37 Beacon Plumbing Unlimited Hydroplane. He has a pair of second place finishes to Jimmy Shane in 1B and Dave Philwock in 2C. Now the 57 FormulaBoats.com Jarvis Repair with driver Mark Evans. They qualified ninth at 147 miles an hour and change. They won 1C, but they were disqualified for an N2 fuel violation. But in 2B, they were all smiles after they took the win. This is a boat that's geared for longer, faster courses, and that could help Mark this weekend. Uh, we did our homework this winter, and we knew the gear ratios and prop ratios we needed, you know, three years of experience, and just kind of finally put it all together. The 88-degree men and Scott Lidico, a third-place finish in 1B, and a fourth in 2A after a one-lap penalty for a lane violation. Tough way to start for those guys. And last but not least, the 100, driven by Greg Hopp, the Jarvis Property Restoration. Greg would have made Fred Leland very happy with his heat win in 1C. Unfortunately, he had a DNF in heat 2B. Now time to take a look at the points after two sets of heats. And remember, the top five drivers in points will make the front row in the final. Now, Mike talked about how critical it is to make your boat turn. For more on that, here's Nate Brown with our Crew Chief Confidential. Here in Detroit, we've got a really unique situation. We have the tightest corner in the entire circuit. We've got the largest corner in the entire circuit. So we have to make sure our skid fins are absolutely perfect. The skid fins on these boats are huge. They're monstrous. They're one inch thick T1 steel held on by a more important bracket and all these rods that are tested to 40,000 PSI. A lot of strain, 15 to 20 tons of force go on this thing every corner. Equally important to all this stuff is our skid fin alignment. The U17 Miss Red Dot has a laser that we put on the inside of the skid fin, and it goes back to a bracket we have on the back of the boat. If you look right above the red dot, you'll see a little red dot, and that's where we have our alignment marks that we test for each race. And that's one of the tuning procedures we do here on the U17. First rule of unlimited hydroplane racing, the skid fin is your friend. Jimmy Shane, ready to go back to work in Heat 3A. It's coming up next. The 2012 Air National Guard Hydroplane Series is brought to you by Air National Guard. Visit GoANG.com to learn more about exciting opportunities in your area. By Whispering Turbines, where life begins at 200 miles per hour. And by Peters and May. For professional management of your worldwide boat transport and logistics, remember Peters and May. Air National Guard Series in Detroit. 26-year-old Jimmy Shane heading out. This is his first run at the Gold Cup, and he knows all about the prestige and the pressure of this very special race. Here's our unlimited access pass. It's weird how the mood changed from yesterday to today. And I think everybody knows uh, what's at stake. They know um, it's the APBA Gold Cup. I've been through this a lot, and I know how your fortunes can change. And so not letting him get himself wadded into a ball about what's going on out here, just keeping him nice and, and even about how we approach today. You know, we, we're in a great position to get to the final, and I've just got to have him as loose and neutral as possible. The Graham trucking team relies not only on Tom's experience, but also on their crew, one of the best in the business. This is a fairly seasoned crew. We've been together for probably at least five years. Some of them I've raced with a lot longer than that. And they've all been chosen, especially when we paired down from a two-boat team to a one-boat team. More on personality, I suppose. The mix of what we had fit well, and, and I had a lot of confidence going in that we would be, we'd be able to handle the equipment. We just had to find out what our driver was about. I had my first unlimited ride in 2007, and Tom was part of the team. So I'm very fortunate to come into this situation where we knew each other. We learned a lot in Madison last weekend about the two of us, how we need to react and interact a little bit better between each other. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's meshing very well. It's catching on much faster this weekend, and it's showing. About one or two pins up the back chute, everybody settles into kind of where they're going to be at that point because it's such a long chute. Just kind of take catching them while they're sleeping and just make a hard. That's kind of what I did yesterday. 
I think as you can see, I mean, there's a ton of ways to take yourself out of this thing. Yeah. You know, so. So let's not do that. <laughs> no, no, we'll. Stay, I think staying clean the next two heats is the most critical thing. Okay. Staying clean, Bill, key word here. Jimmy doesn't want to pressure himself to get up near that one minute pin mark. Doesn't want to jump the gun. Doesn't want to cut anybody off. He's going to have his hands full. And he's got his hands full right now. He's got Kip Brown on the left, and that's J. Michael Kelly in the 37. And he's going to try and leapfrog everybody and get lane one. I think he's going to pull it off, Bill. He's got lane one, but it's a double-edged sword. He's not going to have much speed to be able to carry to this start-finish line. On board with John Zimmerman. That's the LDD Dodge. He's got Mark Evans on his right. Big difference here, Bill. Everyone has had to move over a lane, and it's going to change their timing marks for this start. Still looks like Jay Michael's going to be pretty early. Looks like Kip and Jimmy Shane might nail this start. See the Peterson May countdown okay. clock. Yeah, these two guys are uh, right on, Bill. They nailed it. Green flag in the air, and you can see how far back Kelly is in that inside lane. That's on board with Zimmerman. Evans to the outside. Watch this, Bill. As they air these things out, they know that this could pretty much determine the rest of the race. Nobody's backing off here. The battle here between lanes two and three. It's Kip Brown in lane two and Jimmy Shane in lane three. That's on board the Graham trucking with Jimmy Shane. Wow, Kip Brown's pretty close to those pins. Somebody must have come on the radio and said he has more than enough room to close that lane. It's Mark Evans down the back stretch on the far outside. One thing we have to be concerned about here throughout the afternoon is the way the wind can come up on the river. It can, Bill. And you know, sitting over here in the pits, it's a lot different than that first turn. We took a boat ride around here yesterday, and you can actually feel the wind crossing the course. Big difference. As soon as you go into that first turn, you've got that thing hung out to dry, and all you need is a little bit of a gust, and you're going to have your hands full. On board with Mark Evans, 10 career victories in the Unlimited Hydroplane Series. He's battling with John Zimmerman. There's Shane trying to break away from Kip Brown. And as they head for turn one, Mike, this is the area of the course you're talking about where the wind really cuts across. That is, Bill. And if you look to your right, the drivers are aware these buildings create a draft. When that wind comes through there, you better be on your toes with that front wing. 149.354 miles per hour for Jimmy Shane on that first lap. Kip Brown about three miles an hour slower on lap number one. Very deceiving here, Bill. You're sitting in that cockpit. You come around this Bell Isle turn, and you are carrying a tremendous amount of speed all the way through. So it's not just the straightaways here. By no means. That whole first turn, you got your hands full. And it's just the opposite at the rooster tail turn. Just the opposite. When you get down there, you hope that skid fin hooks up and she comes around. Jimmy Shane trying to pull away, looking for his third win of the weekend and 400 more points. That would virtually lock him into the final for the 103rd APBA Gold Cup. Wow! Whoa. You just saw it right there, Bill. Jimmy had to make a quick correction to make sure that thing didn't get taken out from underneath him. He's the guy that wants to keep it clean, right? You heard from his crew chief, Tom Anderson. You can't win this thing if it's all stacked up on a trailer on shore. Good run so far for Jimmy Shane as he heads toward the Belle Isle Bridge. Starting to stretch out his lead. A couple of rooster tails now over Kip Brown, who runs in the second position. Look where he is, Bill. He's not hugging those pins. He's making sure if anything were to take place, he's got a little bit of a margin to bring it back and correct it. And Kip making up a little bit of ground. He's close to within one rooster tail. They head for the back stretch. That big sweeping turn by the Belle Isle Bridge. Jimmy Shane's been racing since he was eight years old. This is his first attempt to try and win the APBA Gold Cup. And man, he's having a spectacular weekend. Already two first place finishes going for number three right here. Here's something right here, Bill. Look to your right. As soon as you get to this Detroit Yacht Club, I don't care how well your boat's set up, it's going to get disrupted before you get into this turn. And this is right where Mike Webster went over. Same spot, Bill. You gotta be on your toes here. Skid fit, digs into the water. Jimmy Shane in first. There's Kip Brown running in second in that inside lane. Water getting a little rough on board with John Zimmerman. Running in the third position. There's fourth place Mark Evans. And the one guy we really haven't seen is J. Michael Kelly. There he is. He pulled that leapfrog move on the back stretch. Got the inside lane, but was late to the party at the green flag. Yeah, it looked like a really good move, Bill, from the, uh, from the beginning, but it may have cost him uh, in this particular heat. 
Currently runs in the fifth position. Everyone is chasing this man, Jimmy Shane. Working the last lap here on lap three. Shane speed 145.135 miles an hour. That's about four miles an hour faster than second place Kip Brown. And I'm sure Tom Anderson is in Jimmy Shane's ear right now telling him, look, this is exactly what we talked about. Keep it clean, keep her out front, but bring it home in one piece. And the one thing you really have to watch for on this river is how rough it gets the longer the day goes. No doubt, Bill. We've got four laps on these particular qualifiers, but when you get to the final, you're going to have to add an extra one and two more boats. It'll really rough it up. Jimmy Shane through the rooster tail turn, heading for the checkered flag, taking the Graham trucking and owner Ted Porter and crew chief Tom Anderson to another win here on the Detroit River and 400 more points. <laughs> Jimmy Shane, 400 points. He's headed to the final, and he still has another round of heats to compete in. We'll see how it works out for him as the afternoon goes along. 58-year-old Steve David won the Rookie of the Year in 1988. Today, he's trying to win his first Gold Cup. Second race of the season for the Air National Guard on Limited Hydroplanes, and it's a big one. In fact, it's the biggest one. The APBA Gold Cup on the Detroit River. Getting ready for Heat 3B, J.W. Myers in the 11 Peters and May is in this heat. And earlier, our Steve Montgomery had a chance to talk to him. J.W. Myers is one of several drivers with special memories of this Detroit River race course. 2005, you set an altitude record over by the Yacht Club in the Elam Plus. Then, 2010, an encounter with a wall. What happened that day? Well, uh, we are just racing along. I had a great run on uh, Mike Kelly that heat. Uh, we're going down the right past the Yacht Club. I had a good line on him, and I went to go throw the Peters and May boat into the turn there. And as soon as I turned the wheel, the boat took a big jump and a skip. After that, I was just kind of along for the ride, and I saw that wall get really close, really fast. And then by the time it was all over, there was parts everywhere, and uh, I was just happy to uh, see daylight. Yesterday, somebody brought you a souvenir. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Uh, my friend Gary with the uh, Detroit Police Department, he, uh, he found the gas pedal. This isn't even the pedal that hurt my foot. If you can see, it, uh, it kind of goes around corners here pretty good. So this is the gas pedal they found. It was uh, not in the boat when it came back. It was in about 20 feet of water, about 40 feet off the wall there. So uh, the cockpit and all kinds of parts, they, it all left town and went scattering everywhere. Well, the first part that left town was the skid fin, and that's what created the problem. Yeah, the biggest part, Bill. It was kind of a freak accident, but he completely ripped the skid fin off the boat, which sent him aimlessly towards that seawall. And that was getting ready for the 2010 Gold Cup here in Detroit. JW missed four months, went through tremendous amounts of rehab, but was able to return to the cockpit at Doha this year. Now, we've talked about how important the skid fin is. Nate Brown talked about it. That's the 88 degree men of Scott Lidico. His crew was up till 4 a.m. Saturday morning repairing the brackets on the skid fin on this boat right here after they had an issue on Friday. That skid fin is very important to every boat, every lap, every heat. Without it, Bill, you're basically pushing a piece of string. You, you have no guidance whatsoever. And that's what happened to JW. That's it. On board with Dave Dilwock, looking for his 10th APBA Gold Cup this weekend. Coming to the green flag for Heat 3B. Looking out the left from Scott Liddy, Coach Boat. Looks like Scott may be just a shade early because here comes these guys on their marks. Green flag is in the air. The start is good. All boats are legal. On board with Steve David. He's in lane one. J.W. Myers in lane two. Dave Philwalk in the spirit of guitar in lane three. Now, during the milling process, Philwalk got washed down by J.W. Myers. And then later in the milling process before this heat, Myers got washed down by Philwalk. The officials are looking at that video. Where's that camera? Check out our new view here, Bill. This is mounting, looking back, right behind the right sponsor. Man, that cameraman going to be getting paid well. On board with Bill Watt looking over at Steve David. Remember, there's a boat between these two in lane two. That's J.W. Myers and the Peters and May. Steve David looking at Bill Watt. Come on, Steve! Come on, Steve! A gentleman on the left, that's Bob Hughes for nearly five decades. He was the president of the board of directors for Miss Madison, and he did a wonderful job for that city, for that team, and for the sport. Steve Bill Watt's wife, Holly, there's the battle for third. Scott Lidico in 
the degree man on board with Lydia Cote looking over at J.W. Myers. And these guys really racing hard. Points very important right now, trying to make the final for the Gold Cup. Leaders also on the front stretch, heading for the Belle Isle Bridge turn. First lap for Steve David, 152.4 miles an hour. These guys are booking it pretty good right here, Bill, and you know what they're doing? They're learning what each other has to offer before they get to this final. That's in the cockpit with Steve David on the old boy Alberto Miscatacid. There's the rear wing looking forward on Bill Watt. If you notice here, Bill, this is the second race in a row that the number six team is running a saltwater scoop on top of the capsule here. They say they're doing that to give the boat a little better balance. Right now it's working for Steve. This is J.W. Myers battling for third with Scott Lidico. Lidico has the advantage now, but has the longer way around. J.W. in the 11, the yellow and blue Peters and May on board with J.W. Trying to rope in Lidico. Gonna do what he can, Bill, to stay inside this race course, which is the shortest way around. He's gonna need all his speed he can get. Scott looks like he's got a little bit of an advantage on his speed here. About 140 miles an hour for each of these boats on their last lap. There are your leaders. Steve David on the inside. Bill Walk on the outside. Bill Walk trying to catch the six. Looks like the water might be getting a little bit rougher in that turn. As you can see, Steve David looks like he just leaped out one lane. Yeah, Bill Walk had to go wide there. On board with David, looking over at the one. The spirit of Qatar. This is for the lead. And 400 points. Here comes Dave. As a driver, Bill, you can see exactly when somebody pulls up on you, and you know where they are. Man, I hope the final's this good. This is a close one here. Look at him hanging those skid fins out. Steve David has the short way around, but Phil Watt really seems to have the speed advantage. White flag in the air, last lap. Two great battles going on. The one for the lead and this one for third. Scott Liddicote has it. J.W. Myers in that boat, the 11, wants it. But Liddicote has the advantage there. And you can see Greg Hopp runs in fifth in the U100. Not sure what took place here, Bill, but uh, Bill Watt sure did seem to pick up a lot of speed this last half lap here. His third lap speed, 158.052 miles an hour. Come on, Dave. Okay, come on, come on, come on. That's really only a couple of shots from his qualifying speed. This crew on the docks, watching the spirit of Qatar down the back stretch past the Detroit Yacht Club one more time. That thing's rocking and rolling, Bill. This is where you gotta have finesse on those pedals. So what you're talking about is his left foot is working that front wing. His left foot is constantly working that front wing. Left and right, left and right. A lot of finesse here. Swinging wide out of the rooster tail turn to the checkered flag. Dave Billwock wins heat 3B. Last lap for Billwock, 158.7 miles an hour. His fastest lap of the heat. Our coverage of the Air National Guard Series will continue from Detroit. Air National Guard Series in Detroit on the Detroit River for the 2012 running of the APBA Gold Cup. And before we go forward, we have to go back and do a little bit of accounting from Heat 3B. Dave Vilwatt, the winner, penalized 50 points for washing down J.W. Myers during the milling. Steve David, a 50-point penalty for encroachment during the competition. And there you see the points after three heats. The top five drivers make the final in the front row, and there will be a one-boat trailer. Now, just behind the main grandstand along the Detroit River is the new Air National Guard Rise to the Challenge display. And it's getting a lot of attention at every stop on the circuit. We're educating Americans all about the Air National Guard. To do that, we have five hands-on interactive challenges. You can work on a jet engine. You can go on a reconnaissance mission. You can take our medics challenge. You can refuel a B-2 Spear Bomber, and then you can test your strength at our Battlefield Airman Challenge. And that's what we do here, and we also invited a few of the drivers to come see what it's all about. First up, J. Michael Kelly and a fitness challenge. The last time I really did pull-ups was probably in high school, which was probably a while ago. But, uh, you know, messing around with my kids at home and stuff, hanging on swing set or something, probably done a couple pull-ups here and there, but uh, probably have to get back to the high school and start doing some more pull-ups, uh, you know, get some more exercise. Next, Kip Brown's dexterity demo. They asked me what I wanted to do, I said, what you got? And they said, well, we got a mechanical challenge, and I'm like, bingo. 
this is the type of thing that, you know, it, it's a segue for the Air National Guard to, to bring fans in, give them kind of a hands-on experience, and uh, this is a way to to bring the general public in here and see what see what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's it's invaluable. Scott Lydico wanted an indoor flying challenge. Oh, this is the hard stuff. That's why it's air conditioned in here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that refueling stuff. I don't think I'll be flying a plane anytime soon. I got a crew that handles that for me back there. These guys, what they do is pretty awesome, and uh, we're just having fun racing boats. It's a little bit different. This is pretty serious stuff. Of all the drivers, Jimmy Shane had probably the toughest test. Well, I can't believe I got picked for the, the mental challenge. <laughs> pretty disappointed in myself, but uh, it's tough to try to remember all that stuff. That's why these guys are good at what they do, because they know exactly what to look for. They know the colors, the geography, and that's why you see I'm here out here racing boats and not doing this stuff. For J.W. Myers, a medical mission. When you're in the in this game here, where it's not really a game, it's just a reality session, I guess. Uh, trying to figure out where all these things are, and if you're in a in a rush and you got to know where it all is, and got to be very aware of your surroundings. You know, the Air National Guard people, they got it figured out. They're they're experienced. They know what they're doing, and it's good to have them. Always good to have the Air National Guard around, working on the tail feathers for the Spirit of Guitar, also doing some work at the front of the boat on the splash rail. Now let's go back to the last heat, and I'm really excited about this. We have a foot cam in Dave Gowak's cockpit. So driver, take us through this. Okay, Bill, here we go. Three pedals in the front of this cockpit. Throttle all the way on the right-hand side. You never lift there. Two pedals on the left, that controls the front wing, or what we call the canard. This basically determines if you're gonna be a boat or an airplane. So you use the middle pedal throughout the corners. That will allow you to keep the boat packed with air as much as possible. That also takes the front of that wing and brings it up, takes the rear of the wing and brings it down. Now we're onto the left pedal. The left pedal will bring the front of that wing down. It'll bring the rear of the wing up. So Dave right now is wanting to make sure the boat is going to be staying on the water. So he's three quarters of the way down this back straightaway. He's on the pedal pretty hard here, trying to make sure she doesn't blow over. And now, just as Dave feels like the skid fin is hooked up, he'll slowly reach over and tap that middle pedal just to pack enough air underneath it to get it through the corner. Back to the left pedal, we're ready for another lap. And that's two and three quarter miles in about 61 seconds, or 158 miles an hour. Wind is picking up, the weather could be a factor. Welcome back. Earlier today, we were entertained by some aerial maneuvers, and unfortunately, the flying has not been confined to that guy. Let's recap what happened in the 4A. First of all, Jimmy Shane's hope to go 4 for 4 ended with a mechanical issue at the dock. Well, it looks like uh, a battery laid down on us. Everything is in series on the boat. We have about three batteries, and if one of them goes, then it's not enough power to get the starter to turn. Major disappointment for Shane. Not so for Steve David. He pretty much dominated from the start. But behind him, there was a thrilling battle between J. Michael Kelly and J.W. Myers. Myers on the inside, Kelly on the outside. Two drivers desperate for points to make the final. The first lap, second lap, third lap, they were side by side. Then here on lap four, as they enter the Belle Isle turn, Myers catches air and goes over. Yeah, Bill, it's unfortunate here, but these guys were hanging it out, and there was a big gust of wind that came through. We caught a roller, and there's not much you can do at that point. It's pretty much a passenger there. Basically along for the ride. JW was okay. He made the ride back to the dock, and then after being checked out, he talked with Mike Allen. I put the Peters and May boat uh, in good position uh, for uh, making us score enough points to make the final. I was trying to go, I didn't want to push any harder than I needed to, and then Mike Kelly came up next to me and he showed that he really wanted to get in the final as well. And so me and Mikey were racing hard and you know, everybody's race clean. It's just that uh, I got tripped up on something down there in the middle of the big turn and up and over it went. Since three of the four laps were completed, the results are official. No points for Shane or Myers, but 400 points for Steve David. Thank God JW's okay, JW's an old. Old dear friend, my God, and I was just thinking about him, the heck with winning the heat, but uh, looks like he's good. He came in sitting up, so happy for him and happy for the Alberto win, and now we go to the final, but I tell you, that's about the, the roughest I've ever seen this river. Man, if he says it's rough, it's rough. So what do you see here? Well, right here, Bill, we're looking at the escape hatch. That's actually J-Dub right there. So when a boat's upside down, if rescue can't get to you, if they're not there quick enough, 
You can always pull the lever and come through the bottom of the boat. The teams in 4B are getting ready to hit the water, but the damage on the 11, how would you assess that? You know, from shore, Bill, it doesn't really look that bad, but at 200 miles an hour, it's all in how you land. Sometimes you come back with sponsons, sometimes you don't. Welcome back to our coverage of the Air National Guard Series in Detroit. The Peters and May machine already out of the water, and Crew Chief Scott Rainey has his guys working hard on some early repairs as they want to get that boat ready for our next stop in Tri-Cities, Washington. The wind really blowing hard as we get ready for the start of 4B. Dave Vilwak in the spirit of guitar, the man to beat. Look at this, Bill. You can already see the small white caps. This is going to get ugly. Now, Dave Vilwak easily broke away from the rest of the pack, but watch him dance this boat down the backstretch past the Detroit Yacht Club into the rooster tail turn. That'll give you an idea of how rough the water is and how hard the wind is blowing. And if that doesn't tell you, this will. Scott Lidico running in second, trying to get points to make the final, goes over in almost the exact same spot as J.W. Myers. Yeah, unfortunate here, Bill, but combination of 200 mile an hour and a crosswind underneath that Belle Isle Bridge, and there's not a whole lot you can do. And as a driver, when you go into this scenario, you see sky water, sky water, and at the end, you hope you see sky, but not for Scott, he saw water. Scott Liddicote was uninjured, and after he was checked out, he talked with Mike. That river's, it's mean today. Uh, it's, it's rough, and you know, the, down that turn, the rollers are big, and the wind's coming right at you, you pop the sponson, and you get some wind under it. I mean, it probably should have gone over the lap before that. I mean, it, uh, I can't believe it came back down. And I was kind of watching for it that time, but you can't you can't see it all. So, yeah, I feel bad for the degree guys and uh, the, the crew, but we'll get the boat put back together and get them next time. Okay, we talked about the 11. How's the 88 look? Bill, this one looks really just as good. All sponsors are intact. That's going to be pretty much just repairs on the top end and put it back together. Now, because the 88 blowover happened on the second lap of the four-lap heat, he had to be restarted, but Kip Brown could not answer the bell when it was time to return to the course. Right at the hit of the key, the uh, battery cable, cable melted and there was a failure. Um, the good news is I figured out just how fast I can get out of that cockpit because they said fire and I went <laughs> <laughs> The restart of Heat 4B was a repeat. Dave Philwock taking the field to the starting line and another strong run for the spirit of guitar. Philwock untouched in this heat and ran away from the field to get 400 points for another win and lock himself into the final for a run at a 10th Gold Cup. Zimmerman second, Hop was third. Big day for Dave Philwock and the guitar guys. Team's doing a good job. We're trying to stay ahead of it. Keep everything bolted together. So here are the points after the four preliminary heats. Philwock, Shane, David, Zimmerman, Kelly on the front row for the final. Mark Evans will be the trailer. It has been a wild day on the Detroit River for the Air National Guard Series. But now, it's time for the final, the race every driver has been waiting for. Chip Hanauer, Bill Muncy, Carr Wood, Dean Chenoweth, Tom B. they're all on this trophy. Who will add their name to the trophy today? Here are the drivers competing for the Gold Cup. Dave Philwock has won it nine times. Today, he tries for number 10. Jimmy Shane has been racing since he was eight. This is his first Gold Cup final. John Zimmerman's team did a ton of work on their boat in the offseason. It could pay off with a Gold Cup victory. J. Michael Kelly was the 2004 Rookie of the Year. He has one win at Cayman Doha. Mark Evans saw his brother Mitch win the Gold Cup. Can Mark pull the upset today? And what about this guy, Steve David? He has done everything you could possibly do in unlimited racing. Everything except win the Gold Cup. Five drivers on the front row. Mark Evans will be the trailer. One of the surprises making the final, John Zimmerman. They've had a terrific day on the water. Down here with John Zimmerman. First of all, congratulations on a terrific weekend for you guys. Thank you. We've been plugging away all weekend, just finishing laps, and we did what we came here to do. Some people are surprised of where you're at. Are you? We have a lot of quality crew guys on the Miss Al DB Dodge Air National Guard Series boat. And I'm not surprised. They work hard and they're very talented. How good is that boat compared to where it was a year ago, John? It's a lot better. It, it rides better. It gets a lot less water on the windshield. And I'm very happy with it. Handicap your chances for us. 
I wouldn't count us out. I mean, realistically, middle of the pack, but you never know what's going to happen at the Gold Cup. We might just win the thing. Good luck. Thank you. We give these teams an information sheet, and one of the guys this team listed as thanking is Mike Hansen, who's crew chief on the six for helping them redesign that boat. Yeah, that uh, that goes a long way inside the pits there, Bill. Each team helps each other out, and Mike's about as smart as they come. You can see the Peters and May countdown clock. The drivers have passed the commitment cone. Steve David has lane one. Dave Philwalk, lane two. J. Michael Kelly in lane three. Jimmy Shane is on board camera. He's in lane four. John Zimmerman will be in lane five. Mark Evans will be the trailer behind the five boat front line. Five laps on a two and three quarter mile course. Green flag in the air for the gold cock. Look at this, Bill. Either everybody's late or Jimmy just nailed the start. Start is under review. Shane might have been early, and that'll be very costly. On board with J. Michael Kelly. And it looked like Shane might have moved over on Kelly. It did, Bill. I don't think uh, J. Michael had anywhere to go to the left, so he had to just sit there and take that rooster tail, unfortunately. So he's gone from lane three to lane four. Meanwhile, on the inside, oh boy, Alberto, Steve David, right next to the spirit of guitar and Dave Billwock. Look what lane four does for you. Those two guys just blew by on the inside. Bill Watt looking ahead, it's Steve David. Bill Watt has nine gold cups. Steve David has never won one. This is his 20th try. Down the back stretch toward the rooster tail turn, and there is no lifting for these two guys. There'll be no lifting at all, Bill, as they get down here towards the Detroit Yacht Club. Especially as they get into the rooster tail turn. It's going to be rough down here. We just had six boats come through. Now the front stretch, Bill Wack has kicked out a little bit, a little wider. Steve David on the inside has the shorter course. Now Bill Wack roaring back, completing lap one. 152.3 miles an hour for Steve David, the leader after lap one. Look at that front wing, <laughs> Bill. He's doing everything he can to keep this thing on the water, but he's also not using the whole wing. He's trying to fly the boat. Bill Wack has the lead on the outside. Steve David has the inside lane. Getting word from the official tower that that driver, Jimmy Shane, has been penalized for a lane infraction involving the 37. Extra lap for Jimmy Shane. That takes him out of contention for the Gold Cup win. Steve David's crew watches from the shore. There's Phil Walk's guys. Down the back stretch. Oh, look at this. Really light for Dave Phil Walk. Man, you talk about standing up on its end. That's about as close as you're going to get, Bill, and he's still not done. Into the tight rooster tail turn. David chasing, Bill Watts leading. David is right there again. All that time he spent in the air gave Steve David a chance to get right back in the game. He's really working that front wing back there, isn't he? Working it, I'll bet he wish it was a lot bigger right now. Dave Billwalk on the second lap, 156.3 miles an hour. And that's impressive on this rough water with these high winds. It's the final here, Bill. And look, there goes Bill Walk's wing. The rear wing has broken loose on the guitar. That has to affect the handling of the boat. On board with Steve David, and now he's going through Bill Walk's rooster tail. It looked like the spirit of guitar might have moved over. David had nowhere to go through the rooster tail. Now back up to speed. Down the back stretch with no rear wing. You know what, Bill? This is supposed to slow him down, but I was deck to deck with Jean Theoret in 2006. Same incident, lost his rear wing, I still couldn't catch him. Into the rooster tail turn. Bill Watt with no rear wing trying to chase down his 10th ABBA Gold Cup. Steve David now runs second and he's got the longer way around now. Bill Watt's crew chief at this point, Bill, has already told him the rear wing is gone. Make sure you're aware of that. You're not gonna have as much pressure to keep this boat on the water. That's J. Michael Kelly, he runs in third. That boat on his right is Jimmy Shane, penalized a lap for lane encroachment, a lane violation, so he'll have to run an extra lap. So J. Michael Kelly's in third. John Zimmerman in the Al DB Dodge machine. He runs in the fourth spot. He's got a good ride right there. There's Mark Evans, the Jarvis Fire restoration boat. He started as the trailer on the field. He currently runs in the fifth position. Now you can see Jimmy Shane in that Graham trucking the boat on the left-hand side of your screen. He knows he has to run the extra lap. He's getting out of everybody's way. Meanwhile, the battle for third is off to his left. That's J. Michael Kelly being chased by John Zimmerman. And Kelly's got a good lead for that spot. Back up front, Bill Watt continues to lead. And wing or no rear wing, lap three, 
153.44 miles an hour, and he's coming around to complete lap four, 152.3. That's two miles an hour faster than his first lap. That's hard to believe, Bill, because, uh, you know, we're working on the last lap here. The water's choppy, and it hasn't slowed him an ounce. Bill Walk and David have taken the white flag. The battle for third now between J. Michael Kelly and John Zimmerman. That's Kelly going through your screen. Here comes Zimmerman, and he is closing in. White flag for these two. Zimmerman has one more lap, two and three quarter miles to try and get a podium finish. Meanwhile, Bill Walk in control of this race, exiting turn one while Steve David in second goes through the apex of turn one. Dave Bill Walk won his first unlimited race at San Diego in 1992. Last week, he got number 66. In between nine gold cups, being chased by Steve David. Looks like the gold cup is going to elude him one more time. Past the Yacht Club, into the rooster tail turn. Parts and pieces flying off that thing left and right, Bill, but he just wants to finish right now. Bill Watt gets a lot of credit for being a terrific driver, and he is, but you gotta credit the crew. They worked hard on this boat, they got it race ready, and Dave Bill Watt wins the Gold Cup for the 10th time. On board with Steve David, will come home second. I'm sure he'll be very disappointed, and I imagine there'll be some conversation on the dock about that incident down in the Belle Isle Bridge turn. J. Michael Kelly, Past the Yacht Club, into the turn. He's gonna get a podium finish, and this team's gonna be thrilled with that. You have to be happy for Billy and James Schumacher. Third place finish in the Gold Cup. Checkered flag in the air. John Zimmerman did everything he could, but couldn't quite catch Kelly, and it's a fourth place finish for John Zimmerman. Another amazing performance by Dave Billwock, his 67th career victory. The 2012 Air National Guard Hydroplane Series has been brought to you by Air National Guard. Visit GoANG.com to learn more about exciting opportunities in your area. By Whispering Turbines, where life begins at 200 miles per hour. And by Peters and May. For professional management of your worldwide boat transport and logistics, remember Peters and May. 103rd running of the Gold Cup for the Air National Guard Unlimited Hydroplanes. Bill Walk is the winner. Not everyone is happy. Steve David and his wife, Sabrina. Mike is with your Gold Cup winner. Dave, biggest competitor here was the river. Yeah, it sure was. I mean, geez, like you saw, you probably got some great footage of me hanging anything in the air. I sort of ran out of canard. And, but I wasn't about to lift, at least not very much. No, no, no. She ripped the back wing off, uh, tried to blow you over on lap two, but you prevailed. Yeah, we made it. So we got here and then kept on. I had to press pretty hard because I knew if uh, I let him get close that I was sort of a wounded duck. And so I had to press a little hard and probably worked over the equipment a little bit. Tenth APBA Gold Cup for Dave Vilwak, now one behind Chip Hanauer. Steve Montgomery is with your second place finisher. Steve, David, you were on the inside, then you were on the outside. What happened? Uh, Dave came over and chopped me. He only had about four boat lengths. We were here, and I think he was aiming for a buoy that's out here and forgot about that one, and that's, that's where I was. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, we won this thing, but, you know, they give the trophy to Dave, so congratulations on its 10th. But uh, I would never want to win a boat race by doing that to somebody. I saw you talking to him. What was his side of the story? He admits that it did come in, and then he corrected. But, uh, you know, this is the Gold Cup. There's no excuse for that. And Thing you got to remember, drivers never forget. See how that plays out later in the season. Steve with your third place finisher. J. Michael Kelly, after the ups and downs of your Gold Cup weekend, a podium finish has to feel pretty good. Uh, get the Beacon plumbing boat on the podium. Uh, you know, I don't even know if we made a podium last year. So for our up and down weekend, you know, we had our good moments and our bad moments. But to uh, finish third in the final really says a lot for our team and, you know, the effort that they put into this. Well, plenty of excitement this week at the Gold Cup. What do you think people are going to remember? Bill, I think the people are going to remember Dave Vilwak won and Steve David didn't. And I think Steve David's going to remember that the most. I think you're exactly right. We're off to Tri-Cities, Washington. We'll see you there. From Mike Allen, Steve Montgomery, and everybody around the course and on the crew, I'm Bill Weber. Thanks for having us in for the race, and congratulations to Dave Vilwak and his team on his 10th Gold Cup win.